Well, welcome to Monkey in the Garden. We're gonna check out a water system. We've been, you know, watering our place through a solar system that we had helicoptered in last year when the road was destroyed and we were determined to save our remaining 75 fruit trees. So we got this slick system that is simple and economical and can provide solutions to many people's water problems all around us. See, well this is our feature pump. This pump is built and designed in India. And we had this pump helicoptered in last summer when the road was destroyed and we still had our fruit trees to water and keep alive. And still this pump is right at this moment watering everything that we have on our farm. It's not enough capacity to do our future projects, but it is, it's, it's putting out a lot, a large volume of water, as much as 10,000 gallons per day, simply with the sun hitting the panel, that gets this pump operating. And this pump is quite extraordinary in that myself with no mechanical skills can take it apart in about half an hour, I can have that thing apart, replace a little gasket, put it back together, and it's functioning again. This pump can run dry and it doesn't, the pump does not fail. It can pump dirty, filthy water, and the pump does not fail. Of course, it clogs up your lines. The beauty of this pump is that although you need a solar panel, you can use a much smaller panel than this. You do not need great lengths of power cables to operate it. You don't need power poles or hydro to be functioning, which was not happening for us last year after the flood. We didn't have power until January of this year. So this simple pump can can it can do quite a bit. It could it it. If these pumps were set up in a place like Spence's Bridge or Lytton, a person could have a pile of cisterns throughout the town. You could pump, fill these, fill these cisterns up. People could water their, water their gardens and their orchards, creating more green space, more fire protection. That lowers the heat level in the air, in the in the environment. And as long as they're not polluting that water, that water will return to the water table. I know it seems like a simple, effective, you know, thing that they're. I, they ought to be popped up all over the place. And how would we get a hold of one? Uh, well, the Future Pump, they're online and you, they, you order it and they, they ship them from India. There's no distributors in Canada. However, a person only needs to order 30 pumps to become a distributor. So even the village of Lytton or the Spence's Bridge Improvement District could become a Future Pump distributor and could actually generate cash already since we've gotten this pump and told people about it Locally, there have been three or four of them purchased, and we know a lot of people that are buying these things because they can be in remote areas with a small water source that they can redirect to their fruit trees or orchard or just an area around their house to keep it greener, which, I mean, we know one fellow farmer outside of Lytton whose, complete, whose farm completely burned down, and his house did not burn down, and he did have a greener space around it. He had a large garden around it, and he was still fighting the fire with a garden hose, so everything else burned to a crisp. And it's, the more green space you have, the more fire protection that you have. I know that when the fire was coming here, prior to the floods, when the forest fire, when the hills were on fire, the f fire department of Coquitlam, they looked over at our place and they thought we would have no problem with the fire. The fire was, even if embers came over, which they didn't think would happen because our property is greener with fruit trees and gardens that is providing more fire protection than having a burned out dried out environment due to water restrictions that are questionable at best we live in an area of rivers and especially with using systems like we use drip irrigation so it's all you know everything's on small amounts of water but that water enters into the water table again I don't know, it, it, it seems crazy that this part of the world is not a super green oasis with all the water coming by. Meanwhile, we all have flush toilets. I'm not saying that everybody has flush toilets, but the amount a flush toilet in an average household uses 365,000 gallons of water per year. And in fact, a flush toilet with a simple bit of plumbing, somebody's hand washing sink, that gray water can go to flush the toilet. Such a system, say in the city of Merritt, with 10,000 odd people, I don't know how many, toilets there are there, but if they were to simply do a simple bit of plumbing, so their dirty hand washing water flush the toilets, there would be potentially tens or hundreds of millions of gallons of water saved from being polluted, which could easily be redirected for more purposeful things like watering fruit trees, creating green spaces, creating a more comfortable environment for people and for birds and wildlife. The amount of birds and diversity of bees and butterflies that come to our place is extraordinary. So, 
there's in some areas there's insane water restrictions and in other areas it's just pure and utter wasteful gratuitousness. So how do you how can a solution come where everybody can win? And I think there's lots of solutions out there. Look at this car. And they have absolutely declared it's completely genius. Other and these are some of these people who are using giant irrigation booms up the way. I mean, Al Simpson was here at Clapton Ranch. He uses a lot of big booms. He saw this thing and he instantly just said, this is absolutely brilliant. That he even thought that if we need to get water on the mountain, this would be a, an excellent way to do it. A series of these. Sooner than big high-tech things that are expensive, use tons of power. And, you know, if they fail, if our other pump fails, we can't fix it ourselves. We have to go and take it to a professional to take it apart. It's complicated. But this thing, this company sends you with a pile of little washers and fly, uh, you know, little belts and stuff like that, that they tell you when you get this pump that parts do fit. But here's all the stuff, here's all the information, you can do it yourself and you can. So it's pretty basic. They were, any, any problem that there has been with a part going, they have no problem, sent more in the mail, free of charge, it's on warranty. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, so this pump, right now as it at is, can lift water 50 feet, and that will, they claim, irrigate two acres. With an adapter, this can lift 150 feet to irrigate half that, one acre. Now, I don't know how many acres Spence's Bridge is, but I don't imagine it's an enormous amount of acreage. So, a limited amount of these pumps could absolutely take care of Spence's Bridge's irrigation needs. And, I mean, and even when the, when the whole system had failed during the flood, this was also getting us wash water up to our house. We had a hose there all the time, so instead of us trekking buckets of water up to the house, we could use it for, you know, non-potable purposes. You could have a shower with that stuff. Sure, you can't drink it, that's another problem. You could put that water, you could put river water through a filter if you had to. But that's the beauty of this pump, is it can, it can deliver it to a, a, a great horizontal distance. Right now, this, this pump can, deliver it on the flat 500 meters or more while lifting it. I don't know how many meters that is, I'm going from meters to feet, but this one can lift it 50 feet up. And that combined with a series of cisterns. I mean, if a town like Lytton or a town like Spence's Bridge had a series of cisterns going through them, small cisterns that wouldn't be so heavy as to need sturdy, big foundations. I mean, perhaps a series of 250 gallon totes could be distributed through people's backyards. A future pump or a similar pump could fill these cisterns. People could have micro hydro or micro drip lines and drip emitters water in their places and they could also have it set up with backup sprinklers so that if there's a problem, if there's a fire warning or it's too hot, turn on the sprinklers. They can lower the temperature, raise the humidity. People will feel better. I mean if if they had if, all, if both of these towns were set up with sprinklers around the place, which could be butterfly sprinklers, which can operate on low pressure, there could be even a day a week where it's celebrate water day and you turn on these sprinklers and everybody's feeling more comfortable and it creates more of a green space. And it, it, it doesn't have to be a waste of water. It does not have to be water pollution. If you're not putting chemicals in this water and the water is returning back, to, back into the ground table and creating more green space, Trees. We were watching a film recently that was talking about how tr when trees are growing that they actually send messages up into the atmosphere to somehow bring more rain down. Now this was a this is a film about the Amazon and there's a lot more trees there so as to what the effects are of small amounts of trees and towns it, it un undeniably keeps creates a cooler environment and more especially deciduous trees like fruit trees or cottonwoods or willows they definitely they are juicier, they're less prone to burning, although anything's prone to burning in the extreme circumstances. But, you know, why isn't this a more comfortable environment for everybody, which would also be more fire safe? There could be more fruit and vegetables in people's backyards. It's, I don't know, it's, it, it seems insane that this part of the world, with all these rivers, are having water problems. It doesn't make any sense. That I think the water problems come from misuse, misuse of water. And although people feel they have the right to wash their cars with water, that's, in some ways, that's a misuse. And especially flushing a toilet, that's a total misuse. These don't, flushing your toilet is, can, as I've said before, it can be simply done with your gray water being directed 
from your hand washing station so that we can all be water rich and put, put it to better use. All solar power. <laughs> and you can hand crank it in an emergency, which is, I mean, you wouldn't want to hand crank and water your farm, but if you had somebody, if the panel failed, and there's some little smolder, you can at least have somebody down here and somebody with a garden hose, walking around with a garden hose, which is easier than schlepping up buckets of water, which is what we were doing before this pump came, and then the system's all destroyed. That's going, but also a big, huge section of drip irrigation is going. 